the first thing you do when you are done collecting all of your supplies is lay your shirt out and get your template and make sure that you have the correct layout. When I did that, I found that the front part of this shirt is not the same as the back, so I have to do some adjusting. Now I have two pieces that are the same width and length, so I'm going to trim it up a little bit. Once your pieces are ready, the next step is to get out your ShapeFlex interfacing. This step is very important because when you fuse on your interfacing, it will stop the fabric from warping or stretching while you're sewing, and it'll help it keep a really nice heart shape. Make sure you put the interfacing on both the front and the back fabrics. To fuse the interfacing to your fabrics, first lay your shirt fabric with the right side down then lay your interfacing on top of it with the bumpy side down. You will then take the iron, make sure it's on a steam setting, or you can use a water bottle to spray water on it. But then you'll just take the iron and glide it over the whole fabric and leave it a few seconds on each part and it will fuse. Repeat for the other fabric also so that both pieces of fabric have interfacing on them. Your next step is you're going to place the bottom fabric right side down, place your top fabric right side up, and get your template and place it on top and get it to the layout that you prefer. This customer wanted to make sure the blue and orange design was part of the heart, so I'm laying that out in a manner where I can accommodate that. If you don't have a clear template, you can freehand draw one on a piece of paper and cut it out or print one out, and you can actually just pin it to your fabric and cut along the outside like a regular pattern. That would be fine too. So I also like to put pins on the inside of the heart before I cut with pinking shears just to make sure nothing moves and it's as perfect as I can make it because sometimes when I cut with pinking shears the fabric moves. I think I might need new ones to be honest but this way nothing moves. You cut out two perfect hearts. The next step is to attach the piece of ribbon for hanging, whether you want to hang it on a Christmas tree or just hang it, have it hanging up for everyday life. Whatever length suits you best, cut the ribbon that length. Next, get your hot glue gun and put a little dot of hot glue, but keep in mind where you will be sewing. I sew with about a quarter inch seam allowance, so 
make sure the dot of glue is not in that quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to line up the front and the back to make sure everything looks good and it, it's all even. I'm going to get my pins and pin everything in place. You can use wonder clips if that's your preference, I just prefer pins. You do need to leave a small hole open so you can get the stuffing into the heart. A trick that my mom taught me was to take a couple pins where you want to stop sewing and make an X with them. Put one in and then take the other one and kind of make an X and when you see that you'll know for sure to stop because there's been many times where I haven't stopped. I leave a small opening, usually about the width of a few fingers, and that is always plenty. Now you'll want to take it over to the sewing machine. I use about a quarter inch seam allowance, and I have to apologize, I'm still getting used to wearing this GoPro. I know that's not the best angle for watching me sew, I'll have to figure that out. But just start at your starting point, go around the whole heart, a quarter inch, pivot at the point, and go around the round areas. And when you get to your X, just back stitch and stop. Trim off any threads that were left from when you were sewing. Now it's time to put the stuffing in. You really don't need very much. You can just make it as full or as flat as you prefer. Just make sure you Get the stuffing up there into the rounded parts of the heart. Here's a little trick that I found. For the opening, have some of the stuffing coming out of it, like overflowing out of it. Don't stuff it all in there. Have a little bit hanging out. And then you'll sew directly over it and that will help the heart keep its shape and not get dented in or looking funny right there where we're gonna sew it shut. So after you're done stuffing the heart, just take a little piece and have it have a little bit overflowing out and then pin it in place. Make sure the back and the front are lined up and you see how that stuffing is overflowing a little bit we can trim it off later so then this this part can be kind of challenging if you have a lot of stuffing in your heart um so you're just gonna same quarter inch seam allowance you're gonna sew your heart shut and then come over here and just trim off the excess stuffing now and you'll see that the shape of the heart just looks good right there. It's not misshapen at all when you leave a little overflowing stuffing. And that's it. Now you have a memory keepsake heart ornament that you can get out every Christmas or just keep out all the time. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to help.